Interestingly, uh, Dr. Melafia is also on the list of the new political movement. Um, uh, it's good to see you again, uh, Doc. And uh, perhaps you want to uh, touch on that quickly before we get into the issue and the politics of uh, fair price. <laughs> well, actually, Sherwin, um, I'm here to speak on the economy, not on politics. So why don't you focus on the economy? I prefer to do that right now. <laughs> Interesting. That's good. So what are your immediate reaction to the new price regime? Well, um, it's not altogether surprising, even though, to be honest with you, I think the, the change is a little bit too drastic. Because only the other day, the IMF and the World Bank have been warning us that we might uh, be moving, unfortunately, towards a very major recession, given the long-term impact of the, um, the lockdown and the coronavirus pandemic in general. Uh, we took a gradual process, you know, up to 108, 121, and 130, and 125. And I think that, you know, uh, in increasing, we should have gone back, you know, steadily, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, the, sh the increase is just too sharp. And uh, coming at a time when, you know, the fundamentals are really looking weak, um, maybe it's a little bit too drastic, I would say. Uh, we would have reduced it to, um, let's say, 130. Uh, but one major factor, obviously, uh, that all our viewers know is that we are the sixth biggest producer in OPEC. And the irony is that we're also a major importer importer of um, of of, uh, of you know um, refined petroleum so as prices increase so does the bill for the import uh, of refined petroleum much as with the revenue with benefits from the increase in, in in global oil prices it also impacts on us negatively in terms of uh, you know, the import bill for refined petroleum. So it's, it's a paradoxical situation. And I would imagine that this adjustment uh, is taking account of those, those realities. Um, but this is not any fault of the federal government, is it? Because are they left with any option uh, because of the, uh, the very uh, frustrated nature of uh, the economics and the politics of uh, uh, how oil uh, price goes up on the global market. Uh, is the federal government left with no option, uh, uh, Doc? Well, I think they still have some options, obviously, because uh, they could have adjusted it to from 125 to 130, but they went drastically to 140. Uh, uh, between 140 and 143. Uh, so it's like we're almost back to what it was at the beginning, which was about 145, uh, you know. Uh, so uh, they had an option uh, in terms of timing and in terms of also the actual price. Um, but, you know, uh, they have decided to do it this way. My concern is not with the adjustment itself, because one way or the other, in the due course of time, we would have had to adjust to the reality, the fact that we are a net importer of refined petroleum. Uh, and of course, uh, someone has to pay for it. Uh, and the subsidies are virtually out. Uh, there were massive fraud, if you ask me to be very honest with you, uh, for a very long time. So I'm happy that, you know, we are outside the subsidies. But at the same time, uh, government should, you know, uh, have exercise some kind of restraint in terms of the kind of adjustments that are made, uh, you know, uh, given the reality of our situation, that the economy is uh, at one of its lowest points. Uh, all the fundamental aggregates are looking very weak. And uh, confidence is at, at, at a very low level, uh, you know, added by, you know, generally the geopolitical situation of the country, which is a very unhappy one, if you ask me the truth, uh, you know, 
fractious, you know, divisions within the party, you know, the appearance of a lack of coherence in terms of focus and direction. And all these things have an impact on how, you know, the economy performs. Uh, so these things we have to look into very carefully in order to reset the economy on the path of you know, growth and long-term um, sustainable development. The petrol is a popular commodity with uh, Nigerians. Uh, if you look at a, uh, the number of people uh, who, uh, who have cars, who, are, who own cars in Nigeria, it may not be as much of a percentage, but if you look at what, uh, how popular this product is with Nigerians, uh, definitely we have some level of impact in terms of transportation and all of that. What, do you, what comes to your mind as a major implications on the pocket of an average Nigerian, uh, this, the impact of uh, the, for, the new price regime? Well, you know, um, you, I don't know whether the word popular. Uh, it, it, petrol is, is a necessity. It's a fundamental necessity for the economy, uh, for transportation, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, many of our homes suffer from serious, you know, light problems, so diesel and the rest of them. All of these are, you know, very critical inputs in terms of, you know, the whole industrial machinery uh, of the country. And uh, to be honest, I welcomed the reduction of prices way back in March. I thought it was a very good thing. Um, but don't forget also that during that period, uh, the lockdown was taking place. And in fact, there was hardly any movement. So people were mostly staying at home anyway and didn't get to really use um, a lot of petrol. Uh, now that you know the thing has been eased, uh, I think that we should have waited a little bit longer. Uh, and, uh, you know, so that confidence will gradually be restored, uh, you know, and the great Nigerian economy can be back to work again. And, uh, you know, and let's be very careful because in a situation of slowdown, uh, the one thing you don't want to do is, you know, unnecessarily raise uh, the cost of, of inputs you know, whether uh, or uh, even taxation and the rest of it. This is not the time to do it. This is the time to nurture the golden egg, the golden chicken that lays the golden egg. So I think um, these are things we have to, to, to take, to look at more carefully in order to get the economy back to work again, restore confidence and, and propel long-term sustainable growth. Dr. Obadiah Melafia, former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, always a pleasure having you share your thoughts on some of these economic and uh, uh, national issues. Thank you indeed for your time tonight. Thank you, Sharon, for having me.